Oh man, are you ready? Because it's time for the Thunderdrome. And when you say Thunderdrome, your voice sounds like a voiceover artist because it's all about the, the Thunderdrome. I'm not going to lie. When WWE came out with all the information about the Thunderdrome, I read it and I was like, that is something I would like to get involved with. Then I got a little bit disappointed because we're so close to the Technodrome. And if you remember the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you will know that the Technodrome was the most badass thing ever. But still, the PC is now dead in terms of having Raw on SmackDown shows and it's time for the Thunderdome. Also make sure you head over to the What Culture Wrestling YouTube community thread right now because the poll is up and of course because it's SummerSlam week we're going to do SummerSlam for retro ups and downs and you can choose from SummerSlam 2001, you can choose from SummerSlam 2002, you can choose from SummerSlam 2011 and you can choose from SummerSlam 2013. Go and do it now. I don't do it right now because right now it's time to up those downs for Monday Night Raw. Brace yourself. Starting off with Retribution back to their silly attacks. I can't get my head around this. On SmackDown, they basically try and kill people, but then on Monday nights, they turn into 12 year olds again, running around like, tee -hee -hee -hee, let's break into the production truck and push all the buttons. And that's what happened here, because we had the whole then now forever WWE intro, but it was all glitchy and weird because, yeah, people were being idiots in the production truck. For some reason, they let the Raw intro video play with no interruption, so who knows what they're doing. And when we cut to the announcers, they sold this like their son Henry had escaped the playpen and was just running amok. I mean, they couldn't have sounded less scared. And just to sort of finish off this craziness that was the beginning of Raw, we have now added a sword effect for Drew McIntyre's entrance music, which means at some point during the last week with everything else that's going on, a conversation was, there's something wrong with Drew McIntyre's music, we need to do something, and then somebody else popped up with, let's put a sword in it, and Vince McMahon probably went, ha 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 pal, that's perfect, rating's gonna go through the roof. So now he has a sword. Now WWE Champion was here though, and every time he speaks, it's great. I mean, WWE did their best to stop that, but still up. I mean, there was this damn good video recapping everything that happened last week between Randy Orton and Ric Flair. And my word, if you can't invest in that, you should retire from professional wrestling. And then Drew McIntyre said he will beat Randy Orton a Sunday when he turns into a fire-breathing dragon. I'm not making that up. That's not one of my silly jokes. This is what he said, please, for the love of everything, do not start scripting Drew McIntyre to say sword-related stuff, because let's not pretend that this isn't what it was. It absolutely was. As I already hinted at, though, the powers that be just couldn't help themselves, because here, as our top guy was talking, we had more retribution nonsense, as we just went to random camera angles and random slates and sort of random promotional pictures for matches. And the real issue here was that if you had never watched professional wrestling or WWE or Raw before, you would have sat there on your sofa going, well, this is, a, this is an absolute mess. This is terrible. I'm going to turn it off. Anyway, Retribution were in the production trucks, just like breaking laptops and threatening people that they're in there. And they made one dude turn off Raw. No word of a lie. It just all went black. And I bet there are a lot of people going, well, that's the greatest episode I've ever seen. Within five minutes, the show is done. I can go to bed joke. When we did return to air, we were in the backstage area where a bunch of the Raw locker room was pointing their finger like, well, what is going on and how are we going to sort this? And Titus O'Neil then won the millennium when he looked over at Tazawa and said, Tazawa, this better not be you and those damn ninjas. And to be fair, Retribution and the ninjas do dress exactly the same. I think Titus is on us, I mean. They all wanted to know what was going on, including Drew McIntyre, who would storm back here before he got interrupted by one gloved Seth Rollins, who was like, look, you shouldn't be the leader. We've gone through this. I should be the leader because when it comes to fashion, look at this amazing thing I have come up with. Now, all this was a little bit cheesy, and I have one thing to mention later on which makes it absolutely stupid, but if you are going to have a group who is trying to bring down your company, they should be infecting it at all levels. So I suppose it's okay they're now going after main event guys, but boy howdy do we have to do something else soon. Ricochet also interrupted these two when they were going at it and said that a little birdie had told him that Rey Mysterio was going to be here this evening. And that's like when back in the day when we were having WWE live events, you'd be in the queue 
you, and some sort of super nerd would be saying as loud as he could, well, my uncle works for lighting in WWE, and he's told me that Stone Cold Steve Austin's going to be here this evening. And then you sit there through the whole show going, oh my gosh, I'm going to see the rattlesnake, and he never comes out. Is what Ricochet was doing. From nowhere, Buddy Murphy, don't call him Buddy, then showed more cojones than he ever has in his entire career because he didn't appreciate how Drew was talking to his buddy. <laughs> See what he did here? So he stood up to him. I mean, nothing went because they all got pulled apart. But that somewhat fascinated me. I wonder if there'll be any fallout to this next week. So Retribution is basically dividing the locker room. And as I always say, at the moment, it's half good. That also means it's half not good. We need to push these together. The Hurt Business was out next, and as you already know, I love this group. I just think they're great. Why they're done with Raw Underground, I will never understand, but I appreciated seeing their faces. MVP was basically bigging up his US title match against Apollo Crews that will be happening at SummerSlam, and said when he has beaten him, he will send Crews back to catering. And MVP is absolutely obsessed with WWE catering, but he went on to say he thinks that Cruz may be behind Retribution because Apollo is so scared about facing the Hurt Business, he's now got these bunch of idiots to run amok and hopefully means he can then run away with his title. I don't think this is true. Apollo arrived before long because, you know, it's raw and that's what we do. Somebody insults you. You give it around about three to four minutes and then you do arrive. And amazing, he said, you know what, MVP, that's MVP, everything you have just said is true if I lose my title. That's why, one, I'm not going to lose this championship, but also, two, if I can win in a match right now, Show and Benjamin and Bobby Lashley, they are banned from ringside this weekend. Everybody agreed. It was going to be against Shelton Benjamin, and of course, Bob and Ben tried to attack Apollo before all this began, but he's just too smart. And then we got this contest, <laughs> and it's getting a down. And why does it get a down? Because after 30 minutes of waiting for a matchup, this finished after, and the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment. And this was such nonsense because beforehand, for the like 52,313th time, our truth ran out to try and get the 24 7 title back. Then he was chased by the ninjas, and I swear that has run its course. And so after the, I dropped my sign, but after the, I'm not saying it, I refuse to say it, but after that, Polo Cruz was indeed able to do a surprise roll up for the 61st time since March 2020, bring down the board, and that's how he beat. Benjamin. Just have Apollo win. Just have him win. I mean, it's frankly incredible that Shelton Benjamin is actually being used consistently on Raw, given how WWE has treated him for, well, the last 25 years. But if Apollo Crews is your big deal, let him win with his big move. We don't need to always go back to the most devastating move in all sports entertainment. This was also pushing WWE finish number one, surprise roll up, and WWE finish number two, the thing that it says on my sign, together. That is not a habit I want to get into. Don't start smoking, it'll hurt your lungs and probably kill you, and don't start doing this. The hurt business then struck, oh damn it, look, look what's happened now, I've taken up smoking, I didn't even want to. Anyway, the hurt business then did strike before Ricochet, Cedric Alexander and Mustafa Ali came out to make the save, but Cedric is such a doofus, he wound up in Bobby Lashley's big full Nelson thing, which I think they're actually now calling the Bobby Nelson or something ridiculous, and it took the world and his son to try and get him off, which eventually they did. And then we learned that MVP now has booking powers because he made a six-man elimination tag team match for later. If that wasn't enough as well, in between all of this, Show and Benjamin also won back the 24-7 title from our truth I want to be that guy, I think it may be time to retire this championship. Angel Garza was then flirting once again with Demi Burnett from The Bachelor, whoever the hell she was, when Ivar from the Viking Raiders approached and he tried to outflirt Angel. He also had a turkey leg, which Garza threw on the floor after he had decided he had been pissed off, to which the Viking Raider then made a brand new one appear using his magic powers. Once again, I'm not making any of this up. I have no idea what this was, but I do know in hindsight, if somebody had given me the opportunity to either watch this or have my nose ripped off, I probably would have chosen the latter. I have to give it a down. Tom Phillips was then plugging the Thunderdome. And as I've already mentioned, I am quite pumped and psyched for this. If they do it right, and let's face it, WWE is pretty damn good at production, it may actually inject some feelings and adrenaline into the product. And that's all right by me. We were then having Ivar versus Angel Garza, and 
can you believe it? I hate doing this. I don't want to be a negative Nancy, but I've got to be honest and transparent. It's getting it down. And they were fine as ever because they're really good at what they do, but it's just shenanigans after shenanigans. I mean, the reason they are fighting is because they're both attracted to this person from a reality TV show and a turkey leg. But of course, when Ivar was in control, he went to do a move. Zelina Vega was in the way and that allowed Garza to just kick him in the head and he got the one, two, three. So you know what it is? I threw it, hang on, it was that. That's what it was. It's always that. I mean, this didn't even go three minutes. I have had cold calls trying to sell me a watch that were more pointful than this. And look, I don't wear a watch. Throughout all of this, Angelo Dawkins of the Street Profits was talking to Demi. And when the match was over, we had a proper segment with them when Angelo was all like, oh, guys, I know what's going on. And Angel Garza, you know what's going on. Maybe we should go and ask Charlie Caruso, insinuating that he's flirting with everybody, which he is. But this isn't like a big revelation. All this lady has to do is watch Raw. He's doing it all the time. Dawkins then said that he had a video he was going to show to everyone when Samoa Joe piped up like, oh, I know what the video is. Now, before we get into this, Samoa Joe is always brilliant. 100% of the time, I mean it. But he said he had got it from his sources, and the reason it even exists is because of the extra security that WWE employed to try and stop retribution. Well, they suck at that now, don't they? Anyway, the long and the short of it is that this footage did show Zelina Vega trying to poison Montez Ford. And my initial reaction was, wait, Angelo Dawkins the whole time has always been like, low, 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 funny, funny, funny. So that's how he treats finding out this tag team partner almost got killed? Okay. During this reveal, Montez Ford also returned to Raw and started beating up Angel Garza and Andrade, who also, to be fair, looked utterly perplexed like this. Why Zelina Vega tried to pass it off like, I don't know, that doesn't prove nothing. I didn't do anything. Yes, she did. She is officially a poisoner. Natalia then beat Mickey James, the returning Mickey James, the somewhat legendary Mickey James, by count out when the cameras weren't even focused on the match. Also, somebody help me. This is the third match that didn't have a proper finish. What am I meant to do? I'm just a human being. I'm just a bored asshole. I try so much, but then you just get stuff like this. It's so hard to make heads or tails out of. You know what? He'll do it. What's that? Yep. Huh? Good. Rap course, yeah, down. But yeah, halfway through, Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy decided this would be the perfect time to confront Samoa Joe. And they were like, look, Samoa, you keep going on about sources who also now apparently have revealed that Rey Mysterio is going to return later. So we want to know the deal. And Samoa's like, well, I ain't going to tell you the deal. Maybe you should leave. And Seth and Murphy were like, well... We're not going to leave. And the whole time, there was a match in the ring. But yeah, as background noise, Natalia pushed Mickie James off the top rope. And that's why she got counted out. But WWE was literally telling you, please don't care about this. We have more important things for you to worry about. Okay, good. Now I know. I'll never invest again. Because I don't want to be made to feel like an idiot. Seth Rollins also said that if Ray and his son Dominic did turn up this evening, he would make sure it's the last mistake they ever make. So he's gonna kill him. I did enjoy how freaked out Rollins was by all of this because he absolutely should be. He ripped out a dude's eye. Whoever's coming back should be mighty mad. It was then time for our second hour and thankfully then out came Sasha Banks and Bailey. You just knew this was gonna be good ship. Up. They joked about which order they should take out Oscar when it comes to SummerSlam, with eventually Bailey going, I'll do it, my friend, and I'll do it for you. But you could just feel and smell the underlying tension here. Their friendship is about to explode, probably sooner than we realize, because out came Shayna Baszler and Oscar, and that's a pairing you don't want to mess with. They are teaming tonight to take on these two because they have some weird mutual respect thing, which they'll then eventually have a big fight when one of them has a championship. Okay, cool. This was also really good, but it should have been better because almost as soon as we'd heard the bell, who made the return to Raw even though they are suspended? It was Nia Jax. And not only did she do this, but she grabbed Shayna Baszler and just chucked her around the place, including into the Perspex glass. And was this a disqualification? No, it was not. Even though a few weeks ago, we had two people who weren't even officially involved in the match having a scrap. And that referee was like, well, I'm just going to throw the whole thing out. But this referee was like, I'm going to let it go because I don't care. None of this makes sense. It doesn't make sense. How are we meant to keep up with it? It also makes me feel stupid, which I am. But I don't want professional wrestling to make me feel that way. It's getting it down. They brawled away from the ringside area, leaving Oscar by herself. And I'm just going to assume that we are going to have Oscar versus Baszler taking on the tag team champions at Payback. And the reason I do say that is because after a little while, Shayna returned. She took the hot tag. There was a bunch of fighting before she made Bayley, the SmackDown Women's Champion, tap out after the Kira Feuda clutch. The last few minutes was 
excellent as well. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that Oscar and Shayna actually win the tag team titles at Payback. Because I just think that fuels the whole Sasha Bailey story for it in the right direction until eventually they have their big fight. Either way, if WWE does do this right, it's going to be phenomenal. And who said that fans can't invest in long-term storytelling? Look at me right now, I'm invested. From nowhere, WWE then pulled a segment right out of their ass. Well, no, not right out of their ass, but I didn't see it coming. SummerSlam tagline, up. It was just Apollo Crews picking his teammates for later, but he went for Mustafa Ali and Ricochet, leaving Cedric Alexander out in the cold. Now, his justification logic was, look, man, you got full Nelson earlier by the Bobby Lashley, and I know how that goes. You need some time to recover. The whole time Alexander was doing that thing that all wrestlers do, you know, when you have been injured or hurt, you just roll your shoulder and you touch it a bit, because it lets the audience know, oh, well, you know, I have been a bit beat up, but I'm sure I'll be okay. Anyway, forget about that though because you've got to dive deeper into this because who has been trying to recruit Cedric Alexander recently? It's been MVP and I think Apollo Crews knows this so he's just being a little bit wary. Maybe I'm seeing too much into this but I don't care. I thought it was really good well, storytelling. Anyway, it was just a really nice tease, although I hope we do turn Cedric heel because he needs it. And when we were done here, Randy Orton just zoomed into the camera lens or the camera shot and just looked around. I guess he saw it as a moment. Shawn Michaels was then talking backstage to Drew McIntyre because he is going to have something to say later. And Drew was all like, oh, I feel I let you down. I've let everybody down. I can't believe it. Everybody down. And Shawn Michaels was like, no, my son, you didn't let me down. And then they hugged and Shawn said he was going to take him under his guardianship. That bit didn't happen, but I bet you think it was possible. Sean then finished this off by saying that he needs Drew McIntyre to give him space later when he does address Orton. And that was the equivalent of somebody having a gun to Sean's head and Sean going to Drew, pull the trigger, Drew, pull the trigger. You just knew what was coming. Right, we're now on to two different points, but it was this stage at the show that I realized them. So I'm just going to throw them into one. But one, where the hell did Retribution go? Like they spent the first five minutes of Raw being super assholes and then just decided, oh well, I guess that enough. And they went home? Where have they gone? And two, what the hell is the deal with the Iconics versus Liv Morgan and Ruby Wright? I swear we are just doing the same thing week in, week out, and it doesn't even progress anywhere. So all of that is getting it down. I mean, there was some idea that maybe Peyton Royce and Billy Kay aren't on the same page anymore, because Billy Kay is meant to be having a match with Ruby Wright, but she's injured, so instead said Peyton's got to do it, and Peyton was like, wait, what? All right, I will do it, because you're my friend, mate, but we never discussed this beforehand. But the big takeaway is that then we did have this, and once again, Ruby Wright and Liv Morgan lost. Why put them back together if they're just going to be a couple of losers? Anyway, the repetition was still there because after Peyton Royce had pushed Liv Morgan into Ruby Wright or vice versa, so once again they're like, oh, why are you doing this to me? I thought we were meant to be friends. They got her back in the ring. Peyton hit that brain buster thingy onto Ruby and she pinned her. And then, yeah, like I say, afterwards Liv and Ruby are like, oh. I just I don't get it. I don't understand. Who is this for? I mean, Morgan and Ruby must be so happy they got back together. They suck. You are going to have to hate me too, but don't worry because it means you'll have something in common with my parents. But I do enjoy Raw Underground. I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying you can't poke holes in it, but you can. But when it comes on, it's so visually different. I feel my watchable genes, if that's a thing, pick up. And therefore, it's getting it up. I suppose this week we did have a little bit of development because Dolph Ziggler, along with Shane McMahon, was watching Eric from the Viking Raiders wreck some fall. And afterwards, when Shane said, Dolph, what would you give his performance? And he gave it four out of 10. Well, then it was Dolph versus Eric. Clearly, somebody has been watching UFC as well, because when Ziggler did have him in a chokehold, he poked him in the eye. Hello, Daniel Cormier. How are you doing? I hope that your eye is OK. And because of that, he was able to choke out Eric. And once again, I kind of enjoyed it. I know. Boo me, boo. So I guess his eye isn't as strong as Rey Mysterio's. But then after this, Ivar turned up and he just plowed into Dolph Ziggler, which kind of knocked him into the crowd. So next week, we're going to get those two guys. I'm all right with this. After this as well, the world's worst father was back on Raw. That's right, I'm talking about Rey Mysterio, but this could be one of Raw's best angles and is getting it up. He was out here with Dominic and Rey was just telling us about all the pain he's been through recently because, you know, one, he's got this problem with his eye, but two, every time he watched the show, he had to see his own flesh and blood have his ass whooped. And look, Rey, there's an easy solution to this. Just stop him going to Raw. See? World's worst dad. Also, in kayfabe, there must have been a situation 
where Dominic was going, hey, Pepe, father, please tell me, how are you feeling or what are you going to say when you're out there? And Ray was like, no, my son, I'll only tell, I'll only tell you when I'm in the ring. Because they had a conversation here where they just caught up with each other. You should have talked to him before it, Ray. I tell you, you are the worst. Anyway, the big takeaway here is that he will be in his son's corner for the match at SummerSlam and together they will vanquish this evil. I tell you, I tell you, Dominic is so going to turn on his dad, but of course, Ray, <laughs> he can't see it coming. <laughs> this is why you chewed in. Of course, before long, Seth Rollins and Murphy did appear, but they were on the big screen because they're a couple of cowards. But Rey Mysterio, using his cunning, goaded them to the ring, and this was essentially a James Bond-like trap because as soon as they were out there, Rey and Dominic got a couple of kendo sticks and they beat their asses much like those two had done to Dommy Boy last week. Smart. So this was payback or retribution and now you see how it all ties in but genuinely i love all of this i think it's really good i think it gets better each and every week and i can't wait to see what dominic actually does at SummerSlam. i'm massively intrigued also wwe do this with other characters that you have i am invested in dominic mysterio and if you told me that at the beginning of the year i probably would have said you crazy so it works as do mvp's mind games because he was in the back here talking to cedric alexander and basically going look apollo cruz doesn't like you ricochet doesn't like you mustafa ali don't like you your mum doesn't like you your auntie joan don't like you but i tell you who he does i do umvup i like you please join my club and here cedric alexander's like oh, i see what you're trying to do but I think it's getting in his brain. Hilariously, we then went back to Raw Underground. It didn't have a finish. It was Riddick Moss versus a Truo Ruas. I think that's how you pronounce his name. And because their fight spiraled outside of the ring, Shane McMahon just went, all right, that's it. Stop fighting. All right, look, this is good because now we have new rules and I said I was going to document all the rules each and every week. So week one, the rule is there are no rules. Week two, the rules are there are no rules, but also men can't fight women and vice versa. And number three is there are no rules. Women can't fight men and vice versa. And also if you have a fight, the spirals outside of the ring and you hit the mats, Shane McMahon will stop it. Okay, good. So we're up to three. It was then time for this six-man tag team elimination match. And this was just like, tearing at me in the insides because it was really fun so it gets an up but it was also nonsense and therefore it gets a down remember the ghostbusters said never cross the streams well now we're crossing them and what am i talking about well i'm talking about mustafa ali i just don't get it when he returned a few weeks ago and got that massive win i was so excited but then he vanished and then he was losing matches on main event and here he didn't even last 90 seconds before bobby lashley ate him alive gave him the dominator and sent him packing after he pinned him for the one, two, three. Am I the only person in the world that can see Mustafa Ali would be a great baby face if he was pushed? Apparently so. What a, you know, ding, I'm going down in my lift. I'm going down to Raw Underground. At least in Raw Underground, it all makes sense. No, not true at all. I'm going there anyway. So tough. Right, I'm back. Really, I just want to know why people's opinions changed on him so quickly. But don't worry, because I went out there and I figured it out because ever wonder why a man is simply holding a t-shirt as opposed to wearing it given that it's a piece of clothing and you wear clothes and holding it up doesn't make any sense well that's because much like on monday night raw in life sometimes stuff just happens so if you're wondering why mustafa ali could have a big comeback push on raw that only lasts one week before he starts gets buried the whole time simply remember that stuff just happens and if you are struggling to make sense of this give us a call on 0800 stuff just happens somebody is always willing to take your call all right there we go that's a good idea i'm gonna ring the number I'm ringing the Stuff Just Happens number. Hello, Stuff Just Happens. Hello, yep, this is this is Simon Miller. Uh, I've just watched Raw, and Stuff Has Just Happened, and I want to know why. Well, did you ever maybe think that it's you're the problem, and your expectations in this life are too high? And therefore, when you see what's going on on Monday Night Raw, you are actually not witnessing what they're doing, but you're witnessing what you hoped would happen. What? No, what? None of that. None of that made a lick of sense. Exactly. I should have seen it coming. Ricochet was then gone in another 60 seconds after Shelton Benjamin hit them with the pay dirt. And I think we just got a call, a card, a card, or a spade, a spade, whatever the hell that saying is. Ricochet and Mustafa Ali, you got to leave WWE. If you're happy, that's awesome. But I believe you're better than this and your talent should be realized. The good part was that we did get to see Apollo Crews fight back here. And he slowly took out Shelton Benjamin. And then he even took out MVP. And I was getting behind this until 
until he got absolutely annihilated by a spear, courtesy of Bobby Lashley, who pinned the US champion. Now, I'm going to guess this happened because Apollo will win at SummerSlam, and then you've got an obvious reason to start a feud with Bobby Lashley because he won here, but we shall have to wait and see because, again, stuff just happens. If that wasn't bonkers enough, though, there was a sub-meta story going on here, too, because halfway through, Cedric Alexander was out, and he pinned Shelton Benjamin with a roll-up or something to become the 24-7 title, and then after the match, he was taken on to Zawa, where he won after the... I can't remember what his move's called now, the lumbar check, thank you, Brain. But then Shelton Benjamin was back, and he then beat him, so, you know, he was the 24-7 champion again. This is the equivalent of leaving your house to go to the store, but then you realise you have arrived back at your house, you achieved nothing. Raw Underground was back next, and again, I'm sorry, I just kind of dig it, especially here because Marina Shafir, who had been teased before this, was in the ring, or whatever you want to call that thing, and if you know her background, she made this look really good and beat some fool before Nia Jax turned up again. I thought she was suspended. This security really does suck. She attacked Shafir and Jessamine Duke, who was also hanging out before Shayna Baszler got in there and was like, all right, finally, you and I, let's roll down. And of course, Nia Jax is a massive coward. She ran away, but she's also a child because as she was legging it, she just pow, kicked Shafir right in the face. Man, that really made me laugh. But I will say this, if WWE can construct something interesting here, I am not against seeing Shayna Baszler absolutely flub up Nia Jax in Raw Underground. So look, I'm hoping you don't let me down here, WWE. Don't make the bald asshole sad. Montez Ford then beat Andrade with the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment, the surprise roller. Pull the board down, that's number 62. There was also, I have to say, it's over there. There was also a distraction, oh, curse me. Also a distraction because Bianca Belair came out halfway through and started to beat up Montez Ford. So that's what we do now. We do distractions and we do roll-ups. And we do roll-ups and we do distractions. I can't handle it anymore. Look at me, I'm losing my mind. I can't, my hands, no one's hands should be doing this. Just let him win with his move, for goodness sake, down. I mean, honestly, does WWE just not track their finishes? This man was poisoned, poisoned. I'm all right with him getting a good win. What I am going to do, in a very rare occurrence, is I am going to give an up for just one move. But Montez Ford did the most incredible dive out the ring that he got so much height on and he got so much momentum. When he landed, he couldn't control himself and he went tumbling up the aisleway. It was incredible to see. So yeah, this won't happen very often, but just for that, he is getting up. Also, it's very good he didn't die from being, well, you know, poisoned. Thankfully, WWE has smashed everything between Orton and McIntyre, which they did here to close Raw and head to SummerSlam, which by the way, again, the tagline, you will never see coming. It was a little bit mean to have that as your phrase, given that Rey Mysterio only has one eye, but up. As hinted at, Shawn Michaels was here to tell off Randy Orton, and I kind of feel like that's all he did, because he got a microphone and he went, look, Randy, without Ric Flair, you wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be here, Triple H wouldn't be here, Edge wouldn't be here, Christian wouldn't be here, Big Show wouldn't be here, but the difference between all of those names and yours is that you don't respect the nature boy. I was like, all right, Shawn, okay, I understand that you're pissed off, but what, do you think this is going to work? You think Randy Orton's going to hit this and go, oh, I should change my ways? Stupid. However, he did hint that maybe, just maybe, he's going to turn up to SummerSlam and sweet chin music, Randy Orton. And he really shouldn't have threatened the Viper. Because just as he was going to leave, Randy Orton did turn up. He gave Shawn Michaels the RKO. He punted him in the head. And yes, when he did that, Shawn Michaels' hat came off and he has old man hair. And I mean this, I'm not joking around. Stop ragging on Shawn Michaels for that. Do you think you're going to be able to escape father time? No. It sneaks up on us all. Be nice to him. Let him age gracefully. McIntyre was then out here, and honestly, he looked a bit like a Poindexter, because why the hell did he ever agree to not help Shawn, just because Shawn said, give me some space? Because he knew what was going to happen, and after he did attend to the brat break kid, Randy Orton was back, and he was trying to RKO Drew. But McIntyre was too smart for this. He beat him up. But after he went back to the Hall of Famer, well, then it all went bad because Randy Orton wasn't done. He was able to sneak attack him. He RKO Drew McIntyre. And then they stared at each other because you know how Raw has to end. In real world, McIntyre would have chased him away. But you need your cool shot between champion and challenger. And that's what we got and boy, I am ready. Sean sold all of this like he was a drunk, like he was just stumbling around like, oh, I don't understand what's happened. But look, WWE has achieved here because I can't wait for this match. I don't know which way it's going to go. I'm kind of happy with either direction. So that 
gets a couple of thumbs. Otherwise, though, what an absolutely bizarre go-home show for SummerSlam. This was so crazy. Look at these ups and downs counters. We are living in a mad world. Remember that song? Mad world. That is now representative of Monday Night Raw. So I don't like doing this, but too much of this didn't make sense, and television always has to make sense. I'm sorry. Go back on my values getting it down. But we're still positive Pete. I still jump around and get pumped. Now like the video, share the video, subscribe to What Culture Wrestling, head over to whatculture.com, read yourself some articles, follow What Culture on Twitter, What Culture WWE, and watch more videos here on YouTube, What Culture Wrestling. My name is Simon from What Culture. Make sure you go vote in that poll for retro ups and downs and I'll see you then on Friday. But also remember that Dynamite's got moved this week. Look, it's gonna be just a crazy calendar for ups and downs this week. Keep an eye on the channel, then you'll know. Raw is crazy. See you soon.